Okay, when it comes to educate, educate is what? Educate is nothing but the guidelines for the proper behavior which we have to follow. Okay, it is just a guidelines because we are living in the social world. We cannot act as whatever we want to act as. There is a proper guideline, a rule which we have to abide to. That is why etiquette is very important when we go ahead with personality development. Why? Because until and unless you understand the meaning of etiquette, you are not in the proper format. Right? That is why we go ahead with several topics for etiquette. Like there are social etiquette, there is email or telephonic etiquette, there are dining etiquettes and there is dressing etiquette as well. Why we believe in social etiquettes as the number one? If I do it number one, social etiquettes becomes the top priority. Why? Because we are living in the social world. Okay, we are social animals. So we need to connect to the other person and we need to connect in the best format that so that he or she is not offended by us. It should always be a win-win situation when we are connecting with the people around us. That is why the social etiquette is the top and the foremost. Second comes email etiquette. Okay, email or you can even say it as telephonic. Why telephonic and email? Because one, as I told you, one is a conversation one to one or one to many. Okay, there is also a written communication. That can be an email, right? So when you write an email, it can connect to a several people. The audience can be one, two or more than two. That is why we need to understand that it's very important that when we connect to the people, it is with the best format that we can follow. The guidelines and the rules are there. Okay, when we are talking over the phone, okay, if you are talking with your boss, the conversation will be different. If you are talking to your mother, the conversation will be different. And if you are talking to your friend, the conversation will be different. So, if we actually see the telephonic, it depends upon various factors, okay? Like employment, if you are talking about your boss, family and friends, family and friends, these are the basic categories of telephonic conversation. Okay, we give priority number one to the employee whom we are going to represent. Okay, we are employed of any organization, so how should we have the conversation over the phone? If you have called several customer care, okay, you must have seen that the moment they pick up the call, they say thank you for connecting to Tata Docomo. Have a nice day and how may I help you? So it's the image of the company that they are portraying through the telephone and if you are an employee in Dell, if you are an employee in Cognizant, how do you represent your company? Because you become the brand ambassador the moment you pick up the phone. Okay, they are not calling an individual. If you are working at Dell for say, okay, and you are the one who is picking up the phone, the other person who is calling doesn't know who it has picked up the phone. They don't, do not know the name of the person, but they know they have called Dell. And according to that, a customer service is laid down. It's very important to understand in today's scenario that the employee for which we are working should be high at a good standard. It should be standardized. Number two is family. Why I call family number two? Because when you're talking to your father, there is a respect. When you're talking to an uncle, there is a respect. Okay, so family, there is respect plus the love. That's together. And the number three is neighbors or friends, whomever you say. When you are talking to friends or neighbors, 
you do not actually require those strict guidelines which are required when you are going ahead when you are talking to any person through your organization that is why we categorize it at number three next comes dining etiquettes why dining etiquettes are very important because it's easy to eat at home but when you are given an opportunity to present yourself on a social platform wherein you are going to have your dinner lunch brunch or anything you need to follow strict guidelines how to eat okay what should be passed on how it should be passed on when to start all those things are very important when you go ahead with dining and the number fourth one when we see is dressing etiquette when you see dressing why is it important because you have casual okay which we all love you have formal wears and you should know when to wear casual and when to wear formal so when we see for the etiquette when we are going through the etiquette we see that there are four categories which we can divide into the number one is the social etiquette that we have to follow and it should always be a win-win situation for everyone around us the number two is the email etiquette that we follow telephonic that can be the employee the family or the friends the number three is the dining etiquette and the number four is the dressing etiquette when we come to the next we see that what is etiquette actually what is etiquette displaying manners is an act of kindness and respect to our fellow human beings okay it's a respect that we are giving to our fellow human beings a set of rules that govern the expectations of social and dining behavior in a workplace group or society why when i said you dining it can be for a workplace it can be for a group it can be for a society that is why it's very very important to understand what we are going through and table manners are visible signs that you are polished and knowledgeable person as i told you in the very beginning that if you are a common man okay and if you go ahead with the personality development program what is the use the use is the transformation from an unpolished diamond to a polished diamond where the value of yours is more in the society so if you know the manners which hand to hold the fork which hand to hold the spoon everything you know how we can go ahead with it so coming on to the next when we see the basics the basics of etiquette good manners why we say good manners good manners is important because one is manners one is good manners and one is bad manners so which line if i draw a line of manners ranging from a point o to point 5 where do we lie good manners come from the inside and do not change you know because when we are polite when we are because we are human beings we are polite we are passionate we are filled with love and we are filled with energy we want to spread the love and peace all across the society that is why when we see that what is inside us it is the good manners it is the individual person that we are it is the respect that we have you know when you come to see when a child is born and he slowly grows up in the family nobody tells him or her okay to how to behave with the father and the mother but you will see there is a difference how he behaves with the father and how he or she behaves with the mother why because that is inborn all right that good manners comes from within etiquette rules come from the outside and are changing etiquette when we talk about the etiquette it comes from the outside good manners are inside and the etiquettes come from outside and it always keeps on changing why because when i we see these four parameters that is social email telephonic dining and dressing sense do we think that the dressing sense will remain the same all 
occasions no it will change dining will also change telephone will also change email will also change even the social will also change that is why when we see that etiquette is coming from the outside source and it keeps on changing regardless of what we have inside it all depends upon the situation which we are facing outside after that we see that knowing the rules is essential because it puts up in the position of knowing when it's appropriate to bend them okay why i say etiquette can be bended because when you see that etiquette which we are following we follow with certain rules and regulations we can bend it as per the situation requires okay we do not have to follow a particular format yes no maybe right it can be something if we are talking to friends we can bend it why we are not in a good mood we can just say all right let's drop the talk and we'll talk later i'm not in a good mood please leave me alone you can bend the rules right but when you are talking to your superior you cannot say boss i'm not in a good mood let's not talk right now we will talk later you cannot do that why because you are in the platform where you have to provide an essential criteria of behavior which is respected and reputed by the society a person's feelings are always more important than strictly adhering to the rules why because if you are a person you are a human being okay you are not an object the pronunciation that we give you or the, or the pronouns that we give you rather are he or she and it's not it okay we are living beings we have got feelings what do we feel if you are writing an email even to your boss about someone whom you are not very good at or you do not get along with the person you see that it is a different scenario when you will be writing that email you will bend it with some emotions right yes no maybe yes why you will write boss we tried a lot i tried a lot to get along with that person but the scenario forces me to write this email to you i have been trying for a long long time but it hasn't provided any fruitful results so please i want to bring it into your consideration and under your strict guidance that we to get along because we two are in a team and if the team has got different mentalities the success rate will definitely go down so the rules are not very important as your emotions are because we are human beings so we see when should you particularly be aware of your manners all situations all situations are the ones when you should be very aware whether it is at home it is at a hangout zone or it's at your employment you should always be on your toes why because we live a respectful life we need to go ahead with what is required and what is not required exhibit a positive attitude and a pleasant one okay why because if you are not positive when i come and talk about optimistic i always say optimistic is the one which you have to follow be always optimistic it's very very important you have to understand that a positive attitude will take you a long way because it's a very well saying that higher the attitude of a person is higher the altitude he or she reaches in his or her life so if your attitude is not positive you will definitely not go for the stars if your attitude is negative you will think so what like an example if when you you were a child you thought everything was possible why you just put a blanket at your back and you think you are the batman but right now when you come to the world you see that we cannot do this we cannot do that why 
because we are not having that attitude the positivity has gone down why because we are ashamed and we are afraid it's very important why the optimistic is going down because we are afraid we are afraid of many things this is a wrong scenario we should not be afraid okay the fear is there what if i fail the fear should not be there the risk factor what i call you the risk factor is there whenever you want to take up any of the assignment you first analyze the risk factor and you think if you want to go into any industry the risk is a lot where i'm working right now i'm getting a livelihood so you actually do not have an optimistic attitude you actually cut down your dreams if you have these things in your pocket or if you have these things in your mind the dreams go for a toss okay the dreams go for a toss that is why we say if you dream please do not be afraid the second thing is do not have any fear things <coughs> and lastly the risk factor is always there no risk no gain we always know so whatever industry you are going to please don't think that whatever you are doing right now is more important because of the sustainability you have the employability and you are not out of the scenario you are in job and you are earning a good livelihood but what about your dream what is the question is what about your dream what you wanted to become in the first place that's the question what about your dream where has it gone why are you so afraid to follow your dreams why is the risk factor so high why that's the question and then make gentle gestures okay <coughs> once you have written down or once you have analyzed what your dream is you should have the gentle gestures why because gently you will follow the format and as we are talking about etiquettes the gestures should always be gentle you should never be harsh on anyone and you should always perform in a polite way talk always softly why i say talk softly because what we did in the last few sessions is that 90% of the conflicts are due to different ideas and sorry 10% of the conflicts are due to different ideas and 90% of the conflicts are because of the wrong tone <coughs> if you have a wrong tone you will not be able to make the best impression so it's not about the ideas which create the conflicts it's only 10% i am having a different idea my family members are having a different idea they want me to be the job and uh, my dream is something else so 10% conflict is there because of the ideas but when you talk to them you should always talk softly because it's the best etiquette that you have to follow because 90% of the conflicts are because of the wrong tone and you should not follow the wrong tone that is very important please remember this particular 10% and 90% 10% is just because different ideas and 90% because of different or wrong tone maintain good eye contact when i'm talking to you all you are seeing that i'm trying to look at all of you okay you should maintain eye contact with everyone you are talking to please do not be ashamed and by gaining the attention of the person if you are maintaining an eye contact that means you are giving respect to the person right you are actually listening to him or her you are trying to portray your best behavior that is why we say maintain good eye contact rise when you are introducing someone or you are being introduced this is very important 
Why? Because if someone is coming to introduce you, you should immediately stand up. It's a good gesture. It shows that you are giving respect to the other person. You are trying to be respectful and you are actually giving a lot, you know, from your side or you are being the better person. So please rise up when you are introducing someone or you are being introduced. Show common respect and consideration to all the others. As per the preamble or the constitution of the country, we know that it should be a respectful and a brotherhood in the entire society. And the brotherhood can be only maintained when you are there as one of the best persons. Now when we go ahead with grooming yourself, we see that hair should be clean, it should always be styled appropriately, okay? Like it depends, when I say etiquette, as we are talking about etiquette, I always mention that we can bend it. Why? Because when you are going with friends, you can have spikes hair styling. But do you think when you are with your employee or going for any kind of uh, interview, you can have spikes, you can wear whatever you want? No. The dressing and the grooming part is very important for all of you. Now have clean nails, skin and teeth. Very important. Why? Because I have always told you that a personality, when we are going to the personality development classes, we know that we should be always like a twin-sided sword. Why a twin-sided sword? Confidence. Yes, because we need the confidence, we need to have the confidence, we need to have the content that is nothing else but the knowledge that we are processing with us and the third and the last thing is the personality that we possess. If we have the personality, we can be the twin-sided soil. You are having the confidence, right? You are having the confidence with you. You have the content and the knowledge with you. So you can stand up in any society and talk to the people. Right? In the similar manner, if you are having a personality, that is why we talk about clean skin, clean teeth and clean nails. The person will understand you are a hygienic person and will try to have familiarity and friendship with you. On the other part, if you are just opposite to it, you will not see the same thing going on. Many professionals wear makeup. That depends on the field. Okay? Which industry are you in? If you are in a software industry, you need to have the minimal makeup, okay? The girls should not apply a lot of makeup on their face and the boys should be very decent. But if you go on the other glamorous part, do you think that we should have no makeup? No, it's not possible. It depends upon the industry where you are working in. If you are working in some industry, you need to wear makeups and in some industry, you need to have the minimal or the standard makeup style. Now check the fragments and the clothing. Why we say in business etiquette, check the fragments and the clothing because we have seen that that a lot of fragments if you are wearing a lot of perfume and it's too strong it actually irritates everyone okay so it should be a mild fragrance that you always wear and your clothing should always give a hint of which profession you are in if you're a fashion designer you cannot be wearing something which is very normal you have to be different from the others. Stand out of the crowd. Do not be one among the crowd. But at the same time, if you are going to your schooling or your college, the uniform is there. Why? Because they want to maintain the uniformity with the students. That is why we see that the dressing sense is very important. Hold the door. What do we mean by hold the door? Whomever, man or woman, gets to the door first, should open it and hold for the other one okay as we have seen in the earlier days men used to always hold the door for the female but right now 
in 21st century, whoever gets to the door first has to hold it for the other person to pass away. It's an etiquette. It's the most important etiquette that you need to follow so that you are reputed and recognized in the society. The most important thing is recognition. If we, I talk about it, I say recognition is the most important thing. If you are recognized as one of the best personalities in the industry, you will have to get the best reputation and the recognition that you have. Coming to the next, being a gentleman. How should you be a gentleman? A gentleman should always precede a lady upstairs and follow her downstairs, okay? On leaving a hall or any other public place, the gentleman should precede the lady, okay? A gentleman walking with a lady should carry her parcels and never allow the lady to be burnt with anything whatever it is. Why do we say this? Because we always talk about ladies first. Okay? If some lady is having some of the luggage or some of the baggage, the men should always go ahead and carry it for her. What are we doing? We are trying to show respect for that particular person. We are trying to go ahead with the best scenario that we can do for the lady. That is why we say ladies first. Coming to the telephonic or the cell etiquette. Nowadays, we have seen that the cell has become the most important thing in the scenario. The telephones are the life for us. If we are without a cell phone, we think we are cut off from the rest of the world. So you should understand the importance of the telephone or the cell conversation that you are having with the other person. Use appropriate tone of voice. Please understand this again. Okay, the data for 10 and 90. 10% only for different ideas, but 90% of the conflicts because of the wrong tone. So whenever you are talking over the phone or the cell, you should have the best, the best I am talking about. You should have the best tone which you can perform. All right, maintain a positive attitude, whatever is the person saying. Practice to sound confident. You should always be confident because when I tell about twin-sided sword, I put confidence as number one, knowledge as number two, and personality as number three because you need to have the confidence in you, right? Call the other person preferred time to speak or during working hours. What are the examples? The examples are when you call up someone in your employee, employment, you should always ask, sir or ma'am, is it a good time to talk to you? And then you should proceed further. Similarly, when you need to say positive, what do I mean by positive attitude? If somebody is going through a down phase, Okay, you should have empathy with the person. Okay, put yourself in the shoes of the person and think how you would react when you are given the particular situation. If you are acting in the best way, you have the best telephone etiquette. Placing a telephone call. If you are making calls, identify yourself first and then ask to speak the person you are trying to reach. That is what is necessary. For example, if I say, if I tell you, if I call up someone, if I call, say, Cognizant Company, I say, Hi, this is Professor Anurag Shirasko, and I would like to speak to the HR department who is concerned with the recruiting. Can you please transfer the call? It's about the vacancy which has come in the organization. So you are actually first introducing yourself and then trying to get to that person whom you want to speak to. If you are over the phone and another call comes in, what is the scenario? That is most of us, okay? We are talking to someone and the other call rings out. We see it that someone is calling. Always ask if it's all right to put them on hold for a minute or two. Because if it is an important call, okay, it's if you're talking to your friend and a call comes from your boss, 
Just ask your friend, hey, brother, there is a call from my boss or a team lead. Should I place you on hold just for two quick minutes and I'll get back to you? I just want to know what's happening there. So that's very important, how you should handle the calls. And it's vice versa, okay? Getting to the next, keep your word. Why I say keep your word? Because it again goes to the confidence. If you have the confidence, you are a promising person. You are a promising personality. Keep your word. It says that it's a word of mouth. And trust me, I will never change. Do what you promise you have to do. Alright? Make the phone call. Write the note. Make the arrangements. If you have promised to do something, please do it. Do not deviate. Do not go here and there because you are lapsing in some time. No, that's not the format. If you have given a word, you should follow it. Phone habits to avoid. Never eat, drink or chew gum while you are on call because it actually irritates the other person and we have seen many people, they have taken it for fashion. Okay, they are chewing some gum and they are talking to someone. It's not a fashion. It is something which is not to be followed as a good etiquette. Okay, do not hold personal calls for long hours when working. When you are in your work field, please do not hold calls. Okay, if you need to have an emergency call, just make it a quick call, a quick one. You do not need to talk for hours and hours when you are on work because the company is paying you for your work and not for calling you at home. Okay, never use a phone while entering a bathroom. That is a very bad habit. So you should say and you should disconnect the phone and you should call up again if it is required. Okay, avoid talking about private matters loudly in public. If you're having some fight or if you're having some disagreement with anyone in your family, friends, okay, or even your boss, please do not talk that loudly in the public. It's not the appropriate thing to do. Getting to the next, what are the dining etiquettes? When we come to the dining etiquettes, why dining etiquettes are very important? We need to see a lot when we come to the dining etiquettes. It should begin with the minute you walk into a dining event. Okay, the etiquette, you should not wait for the dining etiquette to sit down on a table, on a round table with your boss, peers and co-workers and then start with the etiquette. No, it's not that. It should start the moment you are in the dining hall. Should emphasize people and interaction rather than food itself. When you are there for any of the brunch, lunch, dinner, as one of the employees of your organization who is holding a party, a grand, grand gala, you should not focus on the food. You should focus actually on the people. Why? Because you get the time to do the networking over there. And when I talk about networking, it is the most important thing to do. And you are getting a chance to do the networking. Okay? You do the networking when you are at the dinner and you do not concentrate on the food. You should emphasize always that I would like to know you better. I would like to introduce myself to you. I would like to know the opportunities which are there in the organization. I would like to inform you about my competencies, about my profile and all those things. Why? Because you are doing what? You are doing the networking over there. People come to know you. There might be the main course, the sweets, the desserts, the soups, everything. But you do not have to focus on that. You have to focus on networking. The people are more important than food. Trust me. You should make a favorable impression. When you are there with people, it should be a favorable impression. Why? Because we are going with the dining etiquettes and you should have the best format that you can present. Okay? Re reflects of the company you represent or your competency as a business person. What is a competency? Competency is nothing but what all grounds. That means what all 
positive things you have inside yourself as a business person or an employee. So when we come to the dining etiquette, we should always remember these things. Professional dining basics. When we come to the professional dining basics, respond to the RSVP as soon as you can. Why? What is RSVP? It's a return call to inform the person whether you are going to attend the dinner or the lunch or not. You should always respond because they have to make the arrangements in the same profile. You have to arrive on time. You know, few people think it's better to arrive a bit late. But no, it's not polite. If you are given some time, you should always make sure that you arrive in time. It's being polite and it's not being, you know, very, uh, it's not about being very strictly adhering to time, but it's about being polite. If you arrive in time, it's about being polite to the other person. Wait to sit until host or the hostess indicates that the seating arrangements are. Because as I told you, if you give a RSVP, okay, you tell me if I'm going to come, they actually create the tables for different, different people. Okay, the first table, the second table, the third table, the fourth row, the fifth row, the first row, all these things. So please do not go and sit on the first bench. Why? Because it's not your seat. You are not there to eat the best food for the first time. It's about being polite and it's about following the etiquettes which you have inherited from your family, from your professions, and from your neighbors. So it's very important to stay, wait until the host or the hostess asks you and shows you the seat on which you should sit down. Posture and elbows. How should be your postures and how should be your elbows? Sit straight and try not to lean the table. Okay? Keep your elbows off the table and close to the body when you are eating. Please do not keep the elbows on the table and eat. It's not a good manner. Keep it off and as close as possible to your body and then you grab your food with a spoon or the fork. Alright? However, you should stop to talk. It's okay to rest your elbows on the table and lean forward. You should not be talking while you are eating. You know, it's not a good manner because the food might come out of your mouth. So it's not actually a good manner. You should stop to talk and then you should have to follow it. Where can I keep the napkin? When it comes to the napkin, when you go to the 5 star hotels or the 7 star hotels, open the napkin, refold in half and place onto the top of your lap and fold away from you okay if a napkin is in a rectangular shape all right you are a square shape you have to fold it into a triangle and then keep it on your lap that's very important where you keep the napkin ordering what is ordering do not take a lot of time to select if others are waiting Selecting something familiar and light, not the most expensive thing in the menu. Okay, you know that it is OP, others people money, OPM. You are writing on OPM, that is other people money. That doesn't mean that you will order the highest or the most priced a selective menu. Okay, just order something very similar to whatever they have ordered and please do not keep the people waiting. Allow the host to lead when the ordering. Okay, the host who is there, allow him to give the menu first and then you follow. Just do not pick up the menu card and start ordering because it's not being polite. If possible, do not order messy foods that drips splash or are difficult to eat okay you can do those things at home but you are when you are in a professional world do not try to eat all those junky foods which will drip flash or are difficult to eat that is why ordering now serving when it comes to the serving format what do we do wait until everyone has served before you begin to eat 
Okay, wait for everyone. But once the food has been served in your plate, do not start eating. Wait for everyone so that food is served in everyone's plate and then you say your prayers and you start to eat. If an individual who has to, who has not been served, encourages you to begin to eat, you may do, do so. Why? Because it might be that he is looking for another menu and waiting for it. So he insists that you please go ahead and have your lunch or brunch or dinner while he is waiting for the order to come. So you may do so. It's a may. Okay? Now coming to eat slowly while waiting for the other people's food to be served. Even if they insist you to eat, eat slowly. Do not eat in a hurry. That's very important. On the other hand, you should ask others to begin if your meal is delayed. As your meal or whatever menu you have ordered is being delayed, you should ask politely for the other person to start eating. Now, how to pass the item on the dining etiquette? Pass the food to the right. Okay? Do not put up the bowls and pass it anyway. It should always be a right side. Pass the food towards the right. Transfer the dip to your plate. If there is a dip, you should always transfer it towards your plate. Plates are served on the left. Okay, where you are sitting, the plates are served on the left and dishes removed from the right. The dishes are removed from the right. Pass the salt and pepper together. Do not pass the salt and then the pepper. Just hold them, they are small items. Hold them together and pass them together. That is how you have to pass the items. Now, there are few warnings that you should know. You know, do not pick at your teeth what you do at your home. We should not pick our, at our teeth when you are in public. Okay, it's not according to the etiquette that you follow. Do not pick at your face. A lot of people do those things. Okay, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look hygienic. You are there to have food. So be the most hygienic person that you can be at that point of time. Do not pick your nose. Right, it's not healthy and it's not hygienic again. Or any of your friends. Do not tickle them. It's not the time to have fun around. That is why we say there are few warnings. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Do not print at a restaurant table or in public. Okay? Use the restroom to groom. What we do is when we go to the uh, restaurants, we generally look at the flat glass table which is black in color which gives us our image. We try starting grooming ourselves over there. Do not do that. Wait for the restroom. If you need to groom yourself, if you need to redo your hair, just go to the restroom and do the same. Alright? There are a few things which you should understand. How the plates are kept, how the bowls are kept, where's the knife kept, where's the fork kept. The best thing which you should always remember is fork. F-O-R-K is held in the L-E-F-T, left hand. Fork forwards, left forwards. Spoon, S-P-O-O-N, R-I-G-H-T. So, the spoon is always held in the right hand. That you should remember. And there is a particular format for all the dishes, the knife and the plate and the bowls to be served. Knife also in the right hand. Right. And not... No eating with your fingers. When you are in public, you should not start eating in with your fingers. You know, as we do a lot at our homes. We should not do that. We should always use the fork, the knife and the spoon. During the first course of the meal, use the utensils on the outside. For example, the salad arrived, use the fork on the far left and then use the next fork. Okay, there are different sizes of the fork. Alright, so the far left fork is to be reached first when the salad has arrived. And then you go on to the next one. Now, eating basics. 
Take small bites. Keep your mouth closed and finish chewing before continuing your conversation. Please do not talk with food in your mouth. You, it might fall out, it doesn't look hygienic and doesn't look good at all. Try not to gulp your food, it isn't attractive. Even if you gulp your food, it doesn't look attractive. It doesn't show that you are trying to be hygienic. It shows that you are in a lot hurry. That should not be the case. Right? Now, managing the soup. Hold soup with thumb across the top of the handle. Take soup, soup spoon away so, so that you rather have given it to other person rather than getting it to you. Okay? Serve the people away from you first. Sip from the side of the spoon, not front. Okay? Sip from the side and not the front. It doesn't look good from the front. Your face is being covered. To get the last bit of the soup, tilt the bowl away from you and then hold it in the spoon. Do not drink it from the bowl itself. Okay? Please do not do that. Please do not uh, hold the hot soup. Instead, wait until it is cold. Because we are always in a hurry. Okay? When you are in a hurry, you would like to pick up the soup and then drink. Please don't do that. You are not in a hurry. You are not there to eat as much as you can. You have been, might be your fasting for the entire day because you knew that there was a gala dinner and you have not eaten anything but it's not right to do. Coming to the next thing. What's in my mouth? Okay? Great meal when all of a sudden you realize something is in your mouth needs to come out okay like if you are having a fish and suddenly you recognize there's a bone what do you do cover your mouth with a napkin and get it out discreetly discreetly means without the knowledge of any other person in a very professional and a wonderful manner so that the other person doesn't get irritated that's very important how did that get on the floor. If your utensils or napkin fall, do not crawl around on the floor to retrieve, flag down a waiter and ask for another. Okay, if anything has fallen down, you do not start crawling yourself. You just ask for the waiter to tell, I'm sorry that the napkin has fallen down. Can I have a fresh piece, please? That's very important for you. I can't eat another thing. Finally done eating. Okay? Don't push your plate or chair away unless you are getting up from the table. Place all your utensils on the plate with the tip of the fork and knife across the plate pointing at 11 o'clock. If you point it at 11 o'clock, okay, with your knife and the spoon, that means you are done eating. These are very important things, which we generally avoid but should be kept in mind when we are following the dining etiquettes. Alright, now don'ts. Do not rearrange or stack your dirty dishes. Please do not do that. The waiter is being paid for that and he or she will do that. Okay, never tilt your chair, alright, because when you're tilting your chair, you might fall down and get embarrassed in front of anyone and everyone. So please do not do that. Do not ask people where they are going when they get up from the table. They might be going to the restroom, they might be going for something else. It's not polite to ask them when they are where they are going. If you blench, excuse yourself to no one particular okay it's not a particular person but it's a general format don't chew ice or other incredible parts of the meal all right because it will give you a crunching sound which again is irritating and not hygienic okay do's what you need to do Need to get something out of their mouth, use your tongue or the fork. Okay? 
and when in doubt use a tensile rather than your fingers please do not use your fingers use the tensils which have been provided to you here in your food don't spoil someone else's meal by talking about it food in teeth blow nose rearrange hair go to the restroom for any of these please do not get the food out of your teeth in front of everyone do not rearrange your hair or do not blow nose in front of everyone if you need to do any of these things please go to the restroom food is someone food in someone else teeth let it go if you cannot completely be stubborn all right let it go do not tell hey something is there in your teeth that doesn't look good okay you're trying to embarrass the person in front of the all so do not do that do not like your meal who cares tell the host you do what does it mean even if you don't like the meal and the person has given you a party you need to say that the food was wonderful and finally take time to say please and thank you more often say you are welcome rather than no problem okay when it's your boss and he has done some favor to you you say thank you and the boss says no problem but when you are going with the dining etiquette you should understand that you have to follow that you should always say you're welcome or i am honored and you should not say no problem okay coming to uh, the thing which is always there is a smile it costs nothing but always gives a pleasant personality a pleasant outlook to everyone around you so please keep smiling now we come to the last one the dressing etiquette okay dressing reflects one's personality because they easily represent what kind of person one is it's more important to wear dresses than suit you the most okay it's more important to to wear the dresses that suits you the most and not in fashion okay in fashion can be anything but what suits you the most what is your physique what is your figure according to that you have to dress you need clothes that are really you okay that reflects your inner personality okay and doesn't go with a fake personality that you contempt your personality suit the occasion and your budget and image which you wish to project that's very important how should i organize my wardrobe when it comes out to it spread out your clothes from your wardrobe on your bed to try out combination of tops and bottoms identify the gaps within your wardrobe once you have figured out all such capsules in your wardrobe you can tell which item is needed to complete a capsule or capsules all right that is why you should dress according to the situation and according to the scenario which we go ahead with now accessories when we come to accessories we should always remember it should be particular to the occasion now dressing when it comes to casual and formal one thing is very important that is the occasion okay what occasion you are going to according to the occasion you will have to dress as we have seen in today's format we go ahead with a lot of things a slim tie for boys a good plain shirt a good formal pants good pair of shoes good belts good watches that's more than enough for girls dressing if you are in a professional work suit up that's the most important thing have the minimum makeup that you can do that is very important size also matters why i say size matters you know because there has been different scenarios okay there has been different scenarios different fashions which has come into course but right now whatever the trend is if it's not a baggy trend if it is a slim fit trend you need to follow that so dress according to the scenario or the dressing sense which you need to follow that is how we go ahead with the etiquette 
concluding all the four things which are the first one the social etiquette the second is telephonic or email etiquette the third the dining etiquette and the fourth and the last one is the dressing style if you have all of them remember one thing that you need to be the twin-sided sword and for that you need the confidence you need the content and the knowledge and you need the personality right yeah. any questions